Kirby is one of Nintendo's main IPs, and it's no surprise why. His warm, cute smile and huggable, welcoming body are masters at attracting consumers. And the games Kirby stars in are more than simple enough for anyone to get into. Whether it be a child with their very first console, or a parent who's never even touched a controller in their life, Kirby games are easy enough, at least at first, for anyone to adjust to. However, what starts as a pink ball of seemingly endless amounts of dopamine's journey to simply rescue his food or help rebuild his ship, usually ends in a climactic battle with the purest manifestation of evil you could possibly imagine. Just as most Kirby games morph from a cutesy and playful stroll to a battle straight out of hell, so too does their difficulty. Fighting Magalore at the end of Kirby's Return to Dreamland requires a mastery of Kirby's attacks and maneuver abilities. In bold contrast to fighting Wispy Woods at the beginning of the same game, where you can simply stand at the tree's side and mash your controller for 60 seconds. Now, not all games are this way. Kirby's Star Allies could be considered fairly easy the whole way through. However, even that game had more than enough side content that I still haven't been able to conquer. I think it's fair to say that every mainline Kirby game, at some point, whether in the main game or optional modes, has a level or boss that actually manages to test the player's skill rather well. <sighs> so, there exists a Kirby game where, under absolutely no circumstances, can the player die. Not only can the player not die, but the levels themselves, whether located at the game's start or near finish, are far from difficult. No levels should take more than one try, because you can't fail them. And even if you could, it would be incredibly difficult to, because they're all so ridiculously easy. But that's not a bad thing. Anyone who's played and enjoyed the game knows exactly why it still holds up well, despite its lack of challenges. But for those who haven't, hear me out. Yes, platformers should typically be difficult, but Kirby's Epic Yarn provides a unique workaround that I need to bring up. The first and most prominent addition to the game that justifies the difficulty is, funnily enough, something that you wouldn't think twice about when first seeing, beads. Beads are, simply put, this game's far more useful equivalent to coins in the new Super Mario Bros. series. They can be used for many things, such as buying furniture, getting higher ranks on levels, and constructing new apartments in Quilty Square, so more residents can move in and break into your house without asking. These are already a few nice, completionist uses for the colorful currency you pick up along your quest through Patchland. You collect beads throughout the levels you explore, and can spend them on hundreds of different items afterwards. However, getting hit by an enemy or falling off a cliff will cause you to lose some of the precious beads. And this is where the difficulty comes in. It may be easy to speed through levels and complete them, but not without getting hit a few times. For someone who just needs that diagonally striped wallpaper, it'll be important to snag loads of beads and keep them by not getting hit. I also haven't mentioned the most important usage of beads, new levels. Every level in the game has bronze, silver, and gold medals you can earn by collecting beads. However, boss levels have a fourth reward, a patch used for unlocking secret levels. Two secret levels exist in each world, both locked behind said world's boss. If you want to play those secret levels, most of which are arguably better than the normal ones, you need to win a near flawless fight against the game's bosses. These rewards were enough to entice me and added level of difficulty to an otherwise easy game by having to avoid enemies and rack up currency, but this doesn't really affect those who couldn't care less when it comes to collectibles. It's okay for a game to be lacking in difficulty, as long as it's enjoyable enough. And Kirby's Epic Yarn certainly is. If collectibles aren't your thing, if that beautiful 100% mark on your file doesn't bring satisfaction to your heart and mind, and if you just want to get through the game and nothing more, sure, you won't face any difficulties, but the game still manages to hold up well despite that. While it may not be for everyone, Epic Yarn provides a mostly soothing journey through the multiple segmented worlds of Patchland, complete with cozy music, adorable visuals, and more than enough variety and charm-filled levels to make for a pleasant experience. The game knows it can't be a difficult one, so it puts all of its resources into being an adventure brimming with a childlike sense of happy carelessness, and this is evident in every single game aspect you can think of. 
Starting with the levels themselves, everything I previously mentioned is immediately made clear as day, the moment the curtains pulled to reveal Fountain Gardens. Cheery music begins to play as fountains shoot bursts of water over the fuzzy, fabric-like grass. What comes next is Flower Fields, which is filled with blooming fields of colorful flowers, and later transitions into a rainy pond occupied by frogs. Notice how the rain doesn't come down with ferocious speed, but instead drops rather calmly into the pond below. This isn't a storm, but a light rainfall calmly contrasting the bright sunny scenery encountered thus far. The game strays from many by starting off calm and staying that way throughout its entirety. Every single level is like this, unlike Battle for Storm Hill in Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, where rain unwaveringly pelts the unwelcoming black formations of a war zone, Flower Fields uses rain to convey a short, mellow break from the in-your-face happiness it's been throwing at you. Contrary to Gerudo Desert from Breath of the Wild, where the sun beats against Link's back, sandstorms overtake the rolling hills of gold, and traversing the land is a hazardous task, Epic Yarns Desert is coated in weaved quicksand which almost seems more helpful than detrimental. Even when Kirby is forced into an active volcano, with boiling lava slowly rising beneath his feet, not even the music seems to be phased. The track playing right now is the same track that plays during a race for your life against a magma-filled volcano. Through World 3, a land packed with enough sweets to rot anyone's teeth, past World 4, a sea of dancing pirates, lost mangroves, and deep underwater tunnels, Beyond World 5, a winter wonderland that gives you the same happy feeling of waking up on Christmas Day. Into World 6, a series of planets, asteroid belts, and spaceships. And ending in World 7, the very dreamland Kirby fans have grown to recognize over the years. The game never once lets loose of this stress-free policy it's created for itself. The player is free to take as long as they want to explore the charming scenery, or they can opt to speed through without a second thought for where they are. Epic Yarn's relaxing feel, almost similar to that of Animal Crossing, is something not usually seen in platformers, and makes up for difficulty by adding an unsurmountable amount of charm. Of course, just as difficulty isn't enough to make a game fantastic, neither is a charming art style and level design. Games that are too difficult with no other redeeming features offer no reason to keep playing other than finally triumphing over a challenge that shouldn't have taken nearly as long as it did. And yet, in the same way, Kirby's Epic Yarn can't expect to succeed solely because it has a cute, unique art style. Gameplay, difficult or not, is still a key factor, and Epic Yarn, simplistic though it may be, holds up in this area as well. The majority of the game's levels feature a simple control scheme of running, jumping, grabbing, and throwing using Kirby's... uh, whip, I guess? The controls feel just as 2D platformers typically should, simple yet effective. This limited moveset along with the whip's versatility is all the game needs to design creative levels around, despite the lack of copy abilities, a mainstream staple of Kirby games. Transforming into a car or parachute is charming, and launching into the sky only to just barely catch yourself on the next target with Kirby's Whip is entertaining enough to last throughout the game's rather short playtime without growing stale. But just to keep things fresh, every few levels be prepared for a curveball. Being made of yarn, Kirby is able to weave into different shapes quite frequently, with minor effects. However, in certain scenarios, he can make a very drastic transformation. From a massive tank that plows through anything in its path, to an off-road vehicle that speeds through levels, these transformations change the way the game controls entirely, keeping things new, fresh, and fun. Surfer Kirby rides waves and can get some serious airtime. UFO Kirby can suck up enemies to charge up a powerful electric field that annihilates anything on screen. Train Kirby can, uh, disobey the laws of physics and gravity alike? Hell, throw Fire Truck Kirby in there, why not? All of these transformations add numerous different playstyles into an otherwise pretty basic game. And while some are better than others, they all control differently, and thus the levels they're found in are designed differently as well to fit the uniqueness of the abilities. Between the simple but easily passable main control scheme, which is more than enough to base creative levels and boss fights around, 
In the far from lacking in numbers special transformations, Kirby's Epic Yarn not only has enough charm to make up for its difficulty, but also has enough variety in its playstyle. Platformers should typically be hard. If a series like New Super Mario Bros. was as easy as Kirby's Epic Yarn, I wouldn't play it, because what that game lacks is the charm and variety and control schemes that the latter has. It's because of its difficulty that it can get away with utilizing the same art style and basic format for over a decade now. It's extremely simple and doesn't do much with its artistic direction, but it's okay because it slowly becomes more and more challenging, and progressing feels rewarding because you're improving at the game. Kirby's Epic Yarn lacks that. Sure, levels get slightly more cluttered over time, but since you can't die, they don't become more difficult unless you're trying to rack up beads. While the new Super Mario Bros. series is becoming painfully basic and uninspired, the challenge is what keeps it from being unplayable entirely. Kirby's Epic Yarn is the opposite. It's easy, as a platformer shouldn't be. But because of its unique, expressive personality and many different control schemes, it keeps surprising with every level. A forest filled with giant mushrooms can lead right into a gelatin factory. A sprawling jungle of dinosaurs can be followed by an urgent chase in a volcano, where you play as a fire truck. It's this plethora of different creative ideas, along with the addition of new levels and items being locked behind beads, that more than makes up for a difficulty level that would disappoint many. The game has its own identity, differing vastly from every other Kirby game because of the oddball design choices it contains. Now if I showed you New Super Mario Bros. Wii and New Super Mario Bros. U, can you tell the difference? One's got this bastard, one doesn't, and that's about it.